For those of you who have been here long enough to know what this boat is, we seek to now best it with this. This boat will further the trend of the Yak Killer series. And the best thing about it is at the end, we're going to give it away. Because we got this boat for free. It was donated to us by a really nice couple who saw the channel and thought we could restore it and give somebody else a nice boat. Everything in the boat itself is done, with the exception of the aluminum. But it's nothing we can't handle, because this boat platform is epic. Somehow, this little 14 foot boat creates the most stable platform. One of the best I've ever seen. Something truly mind boggling. And there's a bunch of vintage stuff in here. We're able to put a lot of cool things, some things are budget, some things were new and trending and innovative. We're going to go ahead and give it away to Ben here because he's awesome. He's an OG tiny boater, he's been around here in Havasu, and he's solid. 100% flake free, unlike some people. Ben actually rocked this boat for a long time also. This is one of my initial boats that I ever did and it held up pretty solid. But as things trend and times change, this thing became old news and now we're ready to upgrade to something pretty epic. Because this boat was given to me, I was able to think freely and modify everything at my time and my pace and be really creative. So between a series of choices, between economic choices and really new and innovative trending choices for a boat this size, I think we really did a pretty fantastic job. There's things we accomplished in this boat and I don't even understand how we accomplished some of them. It still mind boggles me how this boat came out so utterly stable. It's so ridiculous for a boat this small. It came out super epic with everything. You gotta stay tuned and watch the entire video. So gutting this thing was business as usual. Pretty much everything you would expect for a boat that's 40 years old. So we just cleaned it up and gutted it out. And it had initially a wooden subfloor and it was a really super thin, like flat out layer. The easiest way to do it is to recreate a wooden subfloor. So that's exactly what we did. We preserved and carpeted a half inch piece of plywood and we laid it back in there and that gave us a pretty good platform to mount pretty much the entire frame on. By accident, I created Gen 5 zero framing in this boat by sheer accident. I was going a different way, but hey, why stop a good thing once it starts going? We later on take the same framing model and put it in other boats with better results once it's refined. There was like three versions of it. But this initial version worked out really well. We polished up things, got some other things going. We took a lot of time to fit the deck correctly and we stuck a crap ton of foam in there. I know you sell noodles there, we took all those out and just stuck in pour foam. A friend of mine, Anthony Jones, another boat builder and YouTuber, you should check him out. He said you could build a deck with 1 4 inch plywood if you did it right. So I'm not that bold, but I am bold enough to try 3 8 inch out. So we fitted this entire boat with pretty much 3 8 inch plywood. And actually for the stationary panels. We only have a few half inch panels in here and that was because we had leftover wood. And we foamed. Did I tell you we foamed stuff? We're not even done foaming yet. But we have to wire this boat before we can get there. Stay tuned for that and stay tuned for some other stuff. Now to finally finish and finalize a nice working and effective platform for these DIY shallow water anchors. Something that has been on my agenda for over a year and a half and is annoyingly been taunting me to figure it out and actually give it to my audience in an effective venue versus last time where I put too many eggs in one basket and it fell short. And then after that, the DIY jack plate, all this is trying to just to form kind of the big huge kits in the back that the bass boats have where they have that really badass offset kit and it's holding the power poles and the motor all together. I kind of wanted to duplicate that, but for a tiny. Making a light yet effective kit for it in a boat as small as this requires the thinnest aluminum you can possibly use that'll be strong enough to hold everything possible. So the jack plate in conjunction with everything here is fairly light. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. The end result if we pull it off right is maximum speed and effectiveness out of the outboard and total control in shallow water, which is where Ben mainly goes for all the fish at. Now that we got all that hard stuff out, it's in my garage and out of my backyard. Tying up the deck, putting on the carpet decals. Thank you, Jason, from TV Nation Shirts and Decals for always hooking up these boats with awesome carpet and boat decals. At this point in time, we're just fine-tuning and putting in all the add-ons. That's either the easiest or the hardest part of the boat for a lot of people. And now we run all the electronics with all marine grade wiring and hardware, sealing all the wires, making sure all the LEDs work, making sure all the pumps and all the electronics work, and hiding everything effectively so you don't see anything that's annoying. 
I put the battery well center mass because it seems to be the best place for weight dispersion and it's really really hard for water to overpower the battery well in the middle of the boat unless it's completely overtaken by water. Another principle that we wanted to look at is where we're going to put the switch panel. I made a DIY switch panel that held all the vital parts, all the electronics, where the switches were and where the fuses were and where the cutoff switches were at the highest part. So it's almost at the highest that it can be in the boat where the deck is. So again, water would have to absolutely flood the boat for the electronics to be compromised by water and fail. So running this and sealing it all nicely, hiding it away and getting it to where it needs to be was a task. but. Ultimately, it was very well and it worked. We have fuses and breakers where we need to have them. Everything's running pretty sound at this point in time. We're just tying it all together. The bow piece, restoring that was so much fun. It was all like non-stainless steel hardware, so it was rusted all together. There was residual carpet. You had to take that wood piece off. And we framed it all together so it's all aluminum with gator skins rubbed on top and we made our own little connection panel in there that would hold everything, be able to hold the trolling motor plug and then hold the switch for the power poles. And we're tying everything in here, just last minute stuff, adding the BT2 systems, adding the port foam in the back, adding some other things and just getting this boat ultimately ready to go to water. This boat was not able to be put on the water at the time that I received it so Slightly sketched about how it's going to handle on the water, but experience tells me that it'll handle fine and soon enough time will tell. And just in case you're wondering, no, you cannot have too much foam in the boat. Every little open void and cranny you want to be putting that stuff in there. Pretty exciting to get the boat this far to get everything repped and ready and just a lot of anticipation because we don't know how it's going to do on the water, how it's going to float. We can only anticipate that after a bunch of experience of doing these things that it's going to do fine. But you know what they say about assuming. So overall, it appeared like he enjoyed it. It appeared like the boat did way better than I thought it was. Look at the draft. It's barely sitting in the water. It's going to get so skinny. It's going to be awesome. Right now, we're just trying to take it all in. Ben's trying to fish on this boat, test all the things out. He hasn't been on a boat in a minute because his other boat's been condemned for him a while, but he seemed to be okay. Everything worked on very spot on. A lot of time went into this boat, a lot of thinking and rethinking. It's just so cool to see it sit in the water <laughs> like nothing and it just holds steady and do everything it's supposed to do. I definitely want to check it out for myself though and see what it's got. There you go, bud. <laughs> this is legit. What the? <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, it's wow. <laughs> what? I'm like edging it, dude. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. You don't even need a butt seat. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm just, I'm just in awe on how stable it is.
will say that with builds like these, it's easy to impress others, but it's something else to impress yourself. Now, I am thoroughly not only impressed, but surprised at how well the boat handles. If there's another 14-foot boat out there like this, I want to see it. Until then, tight lines, everyone. Good luck with your projects. Thank you for helping support this build. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to everybody who used my store. Thank you for the people who donated this boat. You all are awesome. Thank you so much.